Oh man, I've tried to record this so many times, but it's so hard. So basically, for those who don't know me, my whole life, I was raised without a father. Um, my dad, uh, he abandoned me when I was very young and he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And my mom and him had a very toxic relationship for over 20 years. But then when I was born, that was the final straw. He was married to some other woman and he kind of ran off and did his own thing. And I never had fatherly influence in my life. Uh, my mom and I were very poor and she was married to this man who was very, very kind to me um, up until I was about nine years old. And then he died which was really, really hard for my mom and I. And usually when I tell people about my dad, I talk about this man uh, because he was the closest thing I ever had to a father. But he passed away when I was young and I honestly have very few memories of him other than you know just knowing how he treated me and my mom. But then when he died, my mom and I didn't have any money. So we were in Chicago at the time. We ended up moving westward to Los Angeles because my sister was there and we thought that we could start a new life in that direction. And when my mom got there, we started building a new community. I went into new schools and I kept on moving and changing schools every couple years because we couldn't afford rent and we would get evicted and we'd have to move around. And it was very, very challenging. But what was the most challenging part was not having that masculine, like fatherly influence and advice growing up, like whenever I hear someone say that their dad is their best friend or their hero in their life, it, it I, I wish I, w I wasn't envious and jealous of that, but it hurts so much. Like knowing that my life could have been completely different if I had a dad. And my mom was married and remarried a couple times when I was growing up, just there were these men who came in and out of my life as, as parent, like fatherly figures, but they were so imperfect and they didn't give me the, the real like foundation that I needed. So I started seeking wisdom and advice from so many different people like throughout my life. And I still do. And I'm really grateful for pe people out there like Jordan Peterson and people who are thought leaders who specifically help people like me. Um, the reason I brought up this story was because I just uh, finished Date with Destiny, which is one of Tony Robbins' uh, favorite, pro uh, favorite programs. And it was just back in December. And I haven't told many people this, but, after, but right towards the end of the event, he had this section where we, he taught us about resentment and how it's like poison and how if you resent someone else in your life, then it's like drinking poison and expecting them or the other person to die. And he went on to say that there's this effective blaming exercise he wanted us to all do where we would write a letter to someone who we had a lot of resentment towards. And if this person was alive or reachable to call them up and physically leave a message with that person, not for them, but for you to clear out all the gunk so that you can heal and move on with your life and all the trauma that you've experienced. And the first person I thought of in this situation was my dad. And it was so tough for me to do this, but after the event, a couple weeks later, I mustered up the courage and I had his work phone number. I mean, I don't have this guy's cell number. He wouldn't give me his cell phone number when I met with him when I was 18 years old, um, but I had his work number. So I just gave it a shot. I called, I got a voice memo, a uh, voicemail, and I left a message telling him how grateful I was. Now the effective blaming exercise was interesting because you're supposed to think of who you became and why that person was a lesson in your life and why it was the best thing ever, why that person did that thing to you. So I thanked him for not being there because he was an alcoholic and I don't know, but having his influence in my life, I would have definitely been a different person. I wouldn't have been the man I, I am today. And I'm grateful for how I turned out. And I thanked him for, for being honestly a coward and not taking care of me because I was able to have all this other influence in my life. And I, I blamed him in, in a way that was healing. And I said this at the end of the call because I'm a such, I'm generally a forgiving person and, and I just wanted, I, I still crave that fatherly influence in my life. So I said to him, if you want, I'm inviting you to call me back and we can try to get this relationship started again. And now just a little bit of a background. 
Um, he was never in my life, but when I turned 18 years old, I convinced him to meet with me for coffee at IHOP. And this was a quick breakfast. It was about an hour long. And I invited him back into my life at 18 years old as well. And he wouldn't even give me his cell phone number. And at that moment, I was like, okay, this man obviously doesn't want to be a part of my life and I'm done trying. But now at 25 years old, I did it again. And this was very hard for me, especially because, you know, a lot of people would consider me the victim in this situation, but I never consider myself the victim. And I wanted to step up and see what my relationship could be like with him, but maybe not as a father, but learning about that side of my life, not knowing I have an entire family line in history. And he ends up 24 hours later after this voice message calling me back. And it was incredible, you know, learning more about him and why he, you know, cowered it out, honestly, in building the relationship with me in the first place. And I forgave him to his face. And since then, we've been doing these weekly calls. And we had our first Zoom call a couple weeks ago. And it's been insane to see my dad calling me. I have, I programmed him back in. His name is Bill, but I put, I put dad back into the contact and seeing him leave a voice message and it say dad and just seeing that that presence is in my life whether he's even though he's so imperfect but having that energy back in my life is it still feels really strange honestly and i i don't know if i'm ready to have that energy and to have a dad because i've been telling people the story that he's been dead for so long but it feels healing and I don't know if there's someone in your life that if it could be a dad, it could be an ex partner or someone that you've held a lot of resentment towards. But I can tell you that forgiving him was one of the best decisions I could have ever possibly made because it's not only healing me, but it's healing him and it's healing the world because resentment is this type of energy that's like poison not just for you but everyone around you and it changes your character it changes how you hold yourself and i'm very proud of myself for making that decision but i wanted to share this with you because i know i'm not the only one who is in this kind of situation and i wanted to be vulnerable so that i can connect with other people who are like that so if you're watching this and you've resonated with this message and please leave a comment, subscribe, like. I want to build a community of people to grow and expand. People who are looking to be the best version of themselves and really, really take life to its maximum potential. That's it. That's it for this story. I just wanted to share that quick message and keep this one super raw and just me. And uh, if you're at this moment, thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. I hope you have the most incredible day and... I'll see you in the next one.